power surge that goes through the motherboard. Again, that's not going to cause any not going to cause any damage right away, but over time it could cause it could reduce the life of your motherboard. So now that I've turned the engine on, I can then turn this on. And probably the most important thing to remember is you need to, on this particular unit, you have to activate the hydraulic. So once you've activated the hydraulic, you want to remove the safeties. And you should be blocking the engine. This is your brake release. release the brake, it stays in place. In order to operate the AC whenever, you want to go ahead and hit the vitals button. And as you can see in the top corner, the latest version is 3.6.2. All you need to do is hit controller. Once you hit control, it'll look for a connection. And as you can see right here, it shows you Bluetooth connected. And then all you gotta do is hit start. And as you can see, the unit is turning. When you first put it on a key, it's never, hardly ever gonna line up right away. So you can use jog left or jog right for minute details and that'll get you on top of the key. Once it drops in, what you need to do is you hit the, go to the screen, you hit and hold reset until everything says zero. Once everything says zero, all you need to do is hit start and it'll start operating, it'll start turning the valve. So it's going to turn that valve at the minimal amount of torque that it needs and it's going to work its way itself to 150 foot pounds of torque. That's all this machine knows how to do. Is go to 150 foot pounds of torque. Once it hits 150 foot pounds of torque, it's going to stop. It's going to give you a little message on the top that says insufficient torque. When you get that message of insufficient torque, it's not saying it's broken. It's saying I've completed my training. What is it you want me to do next? We as the operators need to know what size valve we're on so we can know the count that's right here. Just going to show you the count of the, of the valve right here and the number of turns. It shows you the current torque that it's turning at, the highest torque that has been, and the limit is set to 150 foot pounds of torque. So if we're on a six inch valve, we know we're looking for between 18 and 21 turns. So if we got to 20 or 20.5, you know we're probably correct on that valve because we're probably left a quarter or half off the top anyway. So once that's done, all you gotta do is come back and hit direction and put it back into the, the open position. You want to leave the valve in the open position. Once that's taken care of, you can actually save the data. And the way to save the data is you hit the back button. And you can actually put in all this information, the size, open, closed, right hand or left hand, good, fair, the condition of the valve is in. So all this information is in there. So we'll go back to the controller. Now, again, this is just an introductory video. For questions, you can reach out to me to make sure we get all the details on it. I just want to make sure that you guys have enough information to get out there to start operating and get this piece of equipment if I'm not available in order for you to get a in-service immediately or within the time frame that you need. All right, so when you're done with the exercise on the valve, what you want to do is disconnect the key. In order to put the arm, it's very important to put the arm back to the knees part. Push it on the knees. And make sure that you put in both 
both brace holders work. And that, you need to make sure that that arm is secure so it doesn't go swinging out and hitting somebody or something. Completed exercising the valves and putting the arm back and replacing both restraints, which is very important. You want to make sure to do a couple last details. So if you're out working and you're going valve to valve, it's excellent to keep it like this. I spend a lot of time on the road, so I store my key like this. That way I'm absolutely positively sure that it's not going to fall through because, believe it or not, that's a $500 piece of equipment right there. The most important thing you need to do is make sure you take your handheld out of the, out of the cradle. Uh, it's not, it is military grade dust and proof. It's ruggedized, has military grade dust proofing, and it is waterproof up to 1.5 meters. So I've been to several utilities, including Cape Coral, uh, when I did their in-service they hadn't charged up their unit yet. So I went ahead and pulled mine out and was able to connect it via Bluetooth to their system. So we're exercising on a nice, clean hydrant valve and it had a nice, clean puddle with some grass in it. I literally took my handheld and threw it in the puddle, picked it up, dried it off, reconnected it and put it back to work. So when I tell you that it's waterproof, I mean it. I know because I've tested it. So. This is, completes your basic in-service for your NAPI truck. This does not replace me coming out and seeing you guys, but it should get you up and running. If you have any questions, you can always give me a call. Again, I can be reached at 847-778-8824, or you can email me at hcruise at ehwalks.com. Also, this is an iPhone, so if I can't resolve it, resolve it over the phone, I can also do FaceTime calls. So uh, get out there and start turning some valves, and I'll see you on the next video.